with Lester's recent events, we're hearing a word which I thought was consigned to the history books, um, fascism, neo-Nazism, and it's being affiliated with um, certain media channels as being associated with RSS, BJP, Modi G. It's suddenly being branded about as Hindus being fascists, Hindutva being fascists. So can you give us a little bit more insight in what you think fascist means? Because when I look at the Oxford English Dictionary here, where are we? We have fascism, this is the Oxford definition, is an extreme right-wing political system or an attitude that is in favour of strong central government and that does not allow any opposition. That is the definition of fascism. So Banditji, tell us what you believe fascism is and how it's being used wrongly in many opinions with the G BJP, with the Leicester events, with Hindus. Can you give us a bit more insight onto that, please? Well, let me start with a slightly different context. Uh, you mentioned Leicester, and I think it's important to keep Leicester in the picture as we discuss this, since that's where this um, call and this propaganda cry went out. You know, all of a sudden, Hindus are being attacked, and the reason that's being given is somehow that as British nationals, as British Hindus, they are culpable and that they should be um, subjected to violence and aggression and uh, racism and religious religiously motivated crimes just because in the institutions of Bharat, the political establishment, the government is a BJP, Narendra Modi, Hindu, right-wing, extremist, fascist, Nazi government. Okay. It's, it beggars belief. If uh, only six months ago somebody had said, oh, in Leicester there are going to be um, religious riots and they're going to blame Prime Minister Narendra Modi for it, you would have thought, no, that can't happen, not in this world. That's, that is a stretch that's far too, too remote. And yet here we are. And the reason that we are here where we are is because there were people who introduced that chant onto the streets of Leicester, pushed it into social media, and then it was picked up and mainstreamed by the BBC, by Channel 4, by The Guardian. They're the people who have really amplified this, this chant. So it's uh, vital that we have a look at the fascism of the BJP. So you're right, your definition is great, it's a good definition. The last time it was really given popular, um, shall we say, an airing was during the Second World War, when you know we had, I think, Benito Mussolini. He was the first one who, who officially adopted this, uh, this notion of power being all-encompassing, all-consuming, and in the hands of a very small number of people, or the state itself. And there being no mechanisms for changing the people who are ruling you. Um, if I recall, the, the actual word relates to a Roman, uh, a time of the Roman Empire when a bundle of sticks with a protruding sharp blade was deemed to be the symbol of uh, rulership. And uh, the name of that uh, particular sort of weapon was fascis. And so he took that as his symbol. That was going to be his symbol. And that was what gave form to the political ideology of fascism. But the definition that you've given is absolutely right. It's authoritarian. It's conventionally associated with the extreme right wing. Um, but we have to remember that the Nazis were actually the extreme left wing. They started off life as a socialist workers party. And so it's, a, it's an extreme ideology which says, we know what's good for you. You don't know what's good for you. And even if it's painful for you, it doesn't matter because we're doing what's right. It is the... It's the ultimate expression of institutionalized slavery, if you were to look at its tatwa. It's a political mechanism for slavery. When you look at it from that point of view, I'm going to broaden the um, definition. What the European Christian West applied to the global South was fascism. Colonialism is a very nice Victorian China teacup sort of word for fascism inflicted upon people of color throughout the global south. So you know, let's spell that out. The British Empire was a fascist empire from the perspective of those who were enslaved by it. And you can see this in many of the actions and many of the remarks, comments that uh, history has recorded, which have come down to us from the royal family. We all know Edward was very closely tied with the Nazis, uh, that he believed in white supremacy. Most people don't know that Winston Churchill 
at the end of the Second World War, there was a meeting he had with um, in America, Washington, with the Vice President uh, Wallace, and they were talking about the the grand narrative and the grand vision for a post uh, Second World War uh, world. And Churchill's remark, and it's recorded, was it has to be it has to maintain white supremacy, which is an entirely fascist statement. You know, most people associate Churchill with fascism. And yet when we consider he was also probably the first European leader to use, to sanction the use of chemical weapons against civilian populations. That's the sort of action of a fascist. You know, if we consider what history has recorded about the way in which the British challenged the Greek people uh, during the revolution, British soldiers used to behead Greek citizens and put their pole, put their heads onto poles and, and display them. And the, when they were challenged on it, they said, well, this is what they are used to and what they expect. And that was under Churchill's watch. You know, that sounds to me like the actions of a, of a fascist. You know, it's um, remarkable that Churchill is deemed to be the, the savior of uh, Europe and the West. But those historians who've studied the details of the world wars, they know that the Second World War was won by three factors, one of which was the Russian Red Army, who had huge losses. The second was the provision of US weaponry. And the third was the sheer volume of soldiers and resources which were provided to the war effort by the what was the uh, empire, but hugely dominated by the Indian subcontinent. Those are the three factors which uh, won the war. And yet Churchill's contribution in there is, frankly speaking, minimal. And yet, uh, as I've said, the, the actions I've described, they're the actions that I would expect to see um, under a fascist regime and a fascist leader. Was Churchill a fascist? Well, let's see what history actually records. Now that the history books which were created by those governments who we're saying need to be scrutinized, those history books are re being rewritten by other records normally records from those who suffered at their hands, which I would suggest are more reliable than the ones of perpetrators. So fascism has never been far from Europe's shores. Fascism, when it's inflicted upon people of color and people of other races and other religions, it doesn't seem to have registered in the Euro-Christian mind that actually that too is fascism. So these are the actions of some of the people who I would suggest display the, um, the traits of fascists. If there's one example I can use to, to make it even more contemporary, at least, I think, at least 151,000 Iraqis died in very violent death because of the Iraq war. It was a war which was not democratically sanctioned. Do you remember the million marchers who said, no, this war is not correct? I was one you... of them on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. And yet, you know, Britain's armies went to war against Iraq on the basis of completely falsified evidence, right? There was no evidence to support that England could be attacked within 45 minutes. There was no evidence to support weapons of mass destructions, etc., etc., etc. A whole civilizational found fountainhead was reduced to rubble on the, the most spurious of, uh, uh, of bases, and the Iraqi people were robbed of their national resources and national wealth. And who was it who did all of this? Tony Blair, Sir Tony Blair, who was avoid, avoid, awarded a knighthood. And so when we look at these people who are alleging that Prime Minister Modi is a fascist, we need to perhaps adopt a slightly broader um, evidence base and then judge him accordingly. So I've just given you some examples of people who I think um, qualify for this label of fascism or at least participating and being complicit and supporting fascism. So I hope our viewers will have uh, uh, appreciated that little walk through history. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.